what, so I think most people are back. What we're going to do for the next 10 minutes is just have five, five minutes of feedback from each group so we can find out what the other, the other half of the group was learning about. Uh, so first up will be Sarah from PLOS talking about what we're doing in, in the workshop downstairs. So just briefly, uh, during our workshop, we basically gave a basic, ba uh, basic introduction to peer review, uh, the basic principles, uh, particularly regarding the ethics. Um, we also uh, discussed a bit of a um, few examples of uh, reviews uh, who, which thought was perhaps not adequate and how should have been rephrased differently. Um, we also had a little bit of an uh, introduction to different peer review models, although you have had all that throughout the, <laughs> the day. Uh, and then possibly the thing we, that was more interactive at the end, we had a little um, go at the pros and cons of uh, open peer review, uh, a little interactive uh, activity about uh, what people think about uh, the positive things and the negative things to be drawn up, what it think could be one of the future models of uh, peer review. So I briefly just summarize this, uh, I think, because I still have them just first in my hand. So pros, isn't, uh, people seem to think overall that this will be a way of uh, providing more transparent peer review, a quality control, uh, a way of gaining experience for PhD students. Um, on the other side, we also had some negative points. Um, people might be more reluctant to provide critical uh, Criticism to negative criticism to um, authors if they have to sign something, they might take longer to to construct their review if they think uh, the name is going to be associated with them. So that, because they might be more careful, which also could be a positive thing, I guess, depending how you how you uh, take it. Um, uh, what else? It might be difficult to introduce in certain fields. So this is coming back to reluctance of management because some people might be stuck in the traditional system and might not wish to be associated to the reviews they, they, they have done. And it might cause rivalry uh, between authors. Uh, it's coming back to, to whether people should know who uh, yeah review is uh, carried out by. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate we didn't have as much time to discuss the last point because I think it was one of the most interesting ones, but Plus, we'll take this very seriously and we'll communicate to the rest of the office your thoughts on this. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, Basha is going to tell us about what was going on upstairs with the data uh, peer review workshop. So, um, I'll just say thank you to Mark for actually taking notes because um, I didn't take any notes. <laughs> um, okay, so we, uh, I started by talking about. Um, whether people were familiar with data papers and whether people were familiar with sharing data sets. And we had quite a few hands up. I was actually quite pleased that lots of people use data. Um, I, I, we then went on and talked about um, where people find data sets and where's the best place to find data sets. Um, the fact that metadata is really important in order to understand um, you know why a, why a data set is um, useful, or how you know to make sure that you can use the data set. You need to know where it was generated and how it was generated, and the methodology and things like this. Um, I then introduced about uh, scientific data and um, our primary article type being the data descriptor, which is uh, what we call a data paper. So it's a paper about the data set itself, how it was generated, and um, where it, where the data lives. Um, I will be sharing my slides as well, so if you weren't there. Um, there was a lot of discussion about um, so how we share data. So in terms of um, can uh, Microsoft Excel be considered an open data format? Um, can people really, if you share a Microsoft Excel um, table, can other people reuse that? And um, I think after some toing and froing, we had a good discussion there. Um, you know, CSV is better, is best because that's a truly open data format. You can open that regardless of where, uh, what kind of um, software you've got. If, if you are using Microsoft Excel at the end of the day, it's, in a, it's a proprietary software. So you have to be able to buy that um, Excel spreadsheet uh, software in order to actually open some your data. So you might want to think about things like that when you're formatting your data for sharing. Um, 
what else? I'm just trying to think. Um, oh, we can use institutional repositories. A question about whether we um, uh, accept the use of institutional repositories at scientific data, and I have to say we do. Um, we're very supportive of uh, working with institutional repositories. They just need to be able to uh, mint um, a data site DOI and uh, have um, offer open licenses, so CC0, CC BY. Um, and then uh, I went through um, the kinds of questions that we ask our reviewers in, when they're peer reviewing um, data. So all of this information is in my slides, so you can, you can, you know, can have a look at those. Um, I think, that, was there anything else you think that I need to, yeah? Okay, great, all right, thanks. <laughs>